Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Habiola. Right here, we are going to deal with the concept of applications of integral calculus, or you can say applications of integration. So we know that in real life, um, integration is being applied when it comes to space travel, you know, engineering, and so much more. But right here, we are going to consider certain specifics, you know, the application of or the applications of um, integration or integral calculus when it comes to equation of a curve. Right, so we are deriving the equation of the function from the gradient that is being provided. You know, you are you are trying to get um, areas and volumes under a curve or between two functions. It can be lines and curves or two curves to put. Right, so that's what we are going to consider the approximate integration. Right, different rules that are assigned. You know, some rules will present um, Simpson rule, the trapezium rule, the rectangular rule. So much more are loaded and prepared in this particular video. So all you just need to do is to stick with us because we will be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. So right there we have applications of integration or you can say applications of integral calculus. Alright, so we have equation of a curve or you can say equation of a function from the gradients provided. Alright, then we have areas and volumes, dynamics and vectors. We have approximate integration, rectangular, trapezoidal, and of course, uh, some presentation will give you Simpson, Simpson's uh, rule. Okay, this trapezoidal, you can also call it uh, the trapezium rule. So, let's make this happen. So, let's start off with um, equation of a curve. So, what you need to do, just like what we actually did regarding um, the tangents and normal. So right here, you just have to carry out uh, integration. We know you recall that your dy dx, isn't it, gives you your gradient, right? And this is actually same as your tangent, if you recall this very well. So once you have done this for integration, you will just do this. So you have your dy dx equals to m dx. So we go ahead then, we integrate, right? Then we have your mc. So all of this will be explained. So basically, how do you do this? Just the same way you've carried out your integration. So at first, you'll be given two points, at least for a typical question, you know, the point where the, the old um, equation of the curve passes through. So probably we have two and minus one. You are given this, right? And you are given the a kind of um, the, the function, yes, you are giving a function, probably the function is 2x minus 2. So what are you going to do with this information provided, right? So what you are required to do at first is that you are going to integrate this, right? So once you have gotten your integral value, right, you will now slot it. So this is your x and this is your y. So you just slot this in, right? So if I integrate this, now I'm going to have um, 2x, right, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, right if you integrate a constant you will have this okay so one plus one that is two okay so two cancels two so at the end of the day i'm going to have x square right minus two x so we have y equals to x square minus two x so what do i do i put y here yeah, then x here yeah. all right so we can see that so from there of course i cannot determine the equation of my curve so once i've done this i'm going to get the value of my c remember that when you integrate you put c right this constant um, sign so i'm going to use this to get my c so once i've gotten my c i can review the equation from here then i put the value of c then we have a complete equation so don't worry we are going to um, use examples to solidify this concept let's move on to areas and volumes you know this area can actually involve uh, two functions right when i say two functions it can be a line and a curve or it can be two curves right so when it involves um let's say curves Right, so what you are going to have to actually get your area is the difference between these two areas, right? So the, the function with the greater area minus the function with the lesser area. So that's just basically what you are going to do. Or sometimes you may be given areas and curves on areas and volumes under the curve. So once you have under the curve, it is applicable that you use a definite integral. You know, remember in definite integral, you have this. You have your upper limit and your lower limit. Do you see that? Now, so just the way you carry out your definite integral, whereby the constant sign will be removed. That's the same thing that we are going to do right there. Of course, there are certain notes that we should uh, keep 
at heart, right? So for instance, you should know that your area is always positive. Whether your integral value comes out with the result of positive or negative, you see that as well. So, uh, and as well, you know, when it's involves some region, you know, probably below, above the axis, you will have it positive. Below the axis, you will have it negative, okay? So there are some other uh, notes or rules or um, conditions that we should understand. Of course, these things will be introduced to us as we move further in this video. So we have dynamics and vectors, okay, just like what we did in the application of um, differentiation. So uh, I can put my dynamics as um, velocity, then this as my acceleration. So like for instance, you recall that your velocity is actually changing displacement over time, right? ds over dt. So at the end of the day, what we are going to have is this. Isn't it? I have, um, sorry, I have v dt. V dt. So basically, I can say that the displacement, right, is the integral of velocity. So when it comes to vector acceleration, you know, we say acceleration is changing velocity over time. So I know the day when I cross multiply, what I'm going to have is actually dv equals a dt, isn't it? So you can see here that velocity is the integral of acceleration. So don't worry, we're going to expand on these concepts as we move further in the video. Okay, so then we now come to approximate integration. You know, this um, application involves the concept whereby you break down, right, the uh, particular function or the area you are dealing with, right, you break it into strips, okay, so once you have broken this into strips, then your answer will just be the sum total of this integral value that you have gotten, integral values you have gotten. So you can actually um, present this, uh, these strips in the form of rectangular um, strips, so that's why we call it a rectangular rule. So here, yeah, your division of your areas, right, will just be in the form of the strip, and the strip will be in the form of what? Rectangle. So that's why we have the rectangular rule. So when you now divide your strips in the form of trapezium, that is where you have your trapezium uh, rule or the trapezium rule. And of course, we have presentations that will actually give you the same same rule as well. So, so much more are loaded in this particular video. Right here, we've come to the end of the introductory part of the applications of integration. Do not forget that to have access to the full video content, all you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. So right there, you get to subscribe. And don't forget to hit the like button always and the subscribe button. And to always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload another video content just for you.